I've tried to include a lot of the themes of my writing and my editing over the past number of years in the latest book that I've written called Becoming Good Ancestors, How We Balance Nature, Community, and Technology. We can't do everything in the world. We're very talented. We can do remarkable things. We can have MRI machines and laptop computers and things that very few people imagined we would have even 20 or 30 years ago. Everybody's talking on cell phones. But there are limits to what we can do. And these wonderful inventions blind us to the fact that there are absolute limits to what we can do and what we can know. Uh, and uh, this is, I guess, the big idea that I work on. Technology is great, but don't bet the entire store on technology getting us out of all the fixes that we're in. It won't. There's a million different biofuel technologies. All of them have problems. Some of them are very good and will help. None of these technologies are really going to provide energy on the scale that we're used to getting from cheap oil. And we've been using cheap oil since the 1930s and 40s. Nothing is going to give us the energy power that we got from simply turning a tap and out comes the oil. That's mostly a thing of the past. Now to get oil we have to sink oil rigs in the Gulf of Mexico or in the Arctic Ocean. It's not a very simple or inexpensive thing to do. So I think that what we're left with is conservation. We are being forced to and will be forced to go to a lifestyle that uses less energy. How are we going to get there? If we're lucky we'll get there through wise decisions made by courageous politicians who are going to willing to tell people the truth. That's if we're lucky. Then we can have crash programs to really get things going again and to change our infrastructure. The infrastructure that we've got is built on cheap oil which we don't have. So we have to change it. Uh, if we're unlucky things will fall apart enough so that it will change by itself but a lot of people will suffer. And I don't want to see that happening. Nobody wants to see that happening. I, think. I have a chapter called Energy and Friendly Fire. Uh, friendly fire, of course, everybody knows what that is. That's when your own soldiers are accidentally shot by people on your side. It's a terrible thing when it happens. But I've taken that term and used it to describe the situation in terms of both conservation and energy with our tremendous reliance on the idea of technology as saving us. Increasing the amount of energy we, can, we have available to us or maintaining the amount of energy we have at the moment, which is in some areas wrecking the planet, is not the best thing in the world. They would come back to the idea of conservation and reduction in energy use. I have a section on economics. I think the economic system that we have developed, again, primarily in the age of globalization, which is post-World War II, has given us a concept of perpetual growth. You can't be healthy economically unless you're growing. Growth is not possible forever. Exponential growth is limited. It just doesn't work very long. As cancer is a kind of exponential growth, and we all know what that does. So we have to rebuild an economy, and there are quite a few economists who are really understand this, like Herman Daly in Maryland and many others, starting with the great economist E.F. Schumacher, who wrote Small is Beautiful. They understand that the only way to build a healthy economy is one based on permanence, on goods that last a while and don't fall apart, and that give you a good, what we call a healthy throughput, uh, an economy that's sustainable. I try to link the idea of globalization to some of the problems we're seeing even in the business of conservation. It's so much easier to be concerned with conserving things somewhere else where you're not living than it is to being really concerned in conservation in the area in which you live. And I end the book with the need for liberals and conservatives to start getting together a little bit more. There's a lot of very important parts of a conservative philosophy. Thrift, communities, appreciation of history, patriotism, which we have to have if we're going to rebuild this country and our world. There's lots of important parts of the liberal philosophy. For example, appreciation of the role of nature in our daily life and the value of nature. The importance of being able to change laws if they're no longer appropriate. It's a very liberal kind of an idea. And I think that ultimately we're going to find an enormous middle ground developing in which people don't necessarily call themselves liberals or conservatives, but somehow are working together to save the country.